What's up, wrestling fans? Welcome to episode number 532 of the Smart Guy Moment Smack Talk podcast. I'm your host, as always, Tony Mango, flying solo for this edition. It's a uh, busy night in New York City here. A lot of people shouting at each other. Um, <laughs> and I'm apparently in a little bit more of my radio voice tonight, I guess. I'm kind of dipping in a little bit into that, like, uh, hello, smooth vibes kind of thing. Uh, I figured I'd keep it a little low key. Um, a couple things to run down here for this episode. Like we normally do here on the hot tags. We got some rumors. We got some gossip. We got some spoilers to tell you. And we got some contract talk and some trademarks and everything. So we will run down to those things, but I kind of didn't want to make a big, big production about it this week. I'm a little bit tired to be perfectly honest. And um, I figured I'd give Rob the night off too as well. I know that he's been kind of working a lot, so uh, hopefully you guys will enjoy it anyway. Um, we're still going to talk about some interesting things. So, you know, as I'm going along here, I want to know what you have to say about these different topics. Drop them in the comments below. As I normally, normally say here, just a reminder for anybody who doesn't know how these things work. If you are on YouTube in particular, and you're dropping your comments on there, hit the like button. Cause that helps out a lot. Make sure you're subscribed to the channel. If you're not click the subscribe button that helps out. And ring that little notification bell. That way, you know, when we go live, I was going to actually go live for this. I thought about it and I'm like, ah, you know what? Uh, let's save that for the next pay-per-view because that's coming up next week. And it's a little less special if you just do it all the time at random or whatever. But um, we will be going live after Elimination Chamber. So if you have those email notifications set up, then you'll know when we go live immediately after the pay-per-view. Pretty much immediately, usually about a couple minutes afterward. But also, if you want to help us out, outside of that like button you can also hit the share button pass this along to somebody on the monetary side of things there are a couple different things that you could be aware of the thanks button is just like a little tip jar sort of thing we've got t public and redbubble are our merchandise shops if you want to pick something up there and then of course you can hit up the patreon or you can click the little join button that's on youtube as well and become uh, part of the members only crowd and get access to the same things as on the patreon if you do the dark cast here, you get the extra bonus episodes like the one that I did this past couple of days where I did my uh, my ultimate Royal Rumble booking. And, um, you know, you can do the pick your poison tier as well. So if you want us to do something and we haven't gotten around to doing it or we pretty much never would get around to doing it, if it's just a random idea that you've got or something that you would like us to do on a podcast or it could be an article as well. It doesn't have to be just a podcast, but, you know, then you can sponsor that. So Keep all that in mind, everybody. And as we're going along here, um, you know, chime in, leave your comments. So let's start off with probably one of the weakest ones to talk about here. It is a trademark WWE Sunday Stunner, which is not only just, of course, making you immediately think about Stone Cold Steve Austin, but WWE Sunday Stunner sounds to me a little bit like it should be a pay per view. And it's kind of strange that they would add the word Sunday in there because that limits them to Sunday and they've been doing a lot more Saturday events and they didn't also trademark WWE Saturday stunner. So maybe it's not necessarily a pay-per-view, but that's the first impression that I got was WWE day one and you know, Nick Khan seemed to have spearheaded that a little bit. So maybe WWE Sunday stunner is another one that he's trying to think about. Maybe they're only thinking that this is a one-time deal and there's been plenty of WWE pay-per-views that have only been a one shot. You know, we only had one stomping grounds. We only had one great balls of fire. Thank God. Cause it was really stupid. We have so far only had one day one, but then again, you know, we just haven't had next year or come around yet. And you know, one breaking point, one fatal four way, maybe they just plan on doing this with WWE Sunday stunner as some special event coming up. And they think that that's kind of like, uh, you know what, uh, if we don't end up doing that next year, then fine, fucking whatever. We spent a couple hundred dollars on a trademark for nothing outside of this a little bit. And it is what it is. It's not like they haven't done the wrestling challenge and so on and so forth. But we do have a couple more pay-per-views that have not been named yet for this year that we know that there's at least a tentative date and location for some of them. One of them being June 5th. It's at the Allstate Arena in Rosemont, Illinois. And we know that we've got another one coming up after SummerSlam, uh, September 3rd or 4th. But that's or, and that could be Saturday. So you got to assume if that's going to be 
Sunday stunner. It's got to be on Sunday, September 4th, because what the hell? Why would they do that on Saturday? But uh, we do know at least one of these pay-per-views that had been previously unannounced, and it was just kind of, you know, pay-per-view name TBD, is the May 8th one, which is now going to be WrestleMania Backlash. So for the second year in a row, WrestleMania Backlash is what they're going with. And I get it. I understand why. It doesn't mean that I have to like it, though. That's what I tweeted out earlier, and it's still the way that I feel about it. I understand you got a lot more cash value to the name WrestleMania. And if you tack WrestleMania onto it, there's a chance that it's going to do better buy rates. But I think in the grand scheme of things, if you're watching WWE on a regular basis, you don't care if it's called WrestleMania Backlash because it's not going to make any difference. Instead, you're just going to roll your eyes over it. But if you're a casual, WrestleMania Backlash probably isn't going to appeal to that many people. Yeah, there's going to be some, I'm sure, that are going to see the name WrestleMania Backlash and they're going to go, oh, this is an extension of WrestleMania. Okay, well, I'm going to be interested in checking it out because I only watch Mania every year. But those people only watch Mania every year. It's not that they watch Mania and then continue to watch it. I have plenty of friends, some of them diehard wrestling fans that just have not been able to get as much into it anymore because of how bad a lot of the product has been. But a lot of people that I know that have been diehard fans since they were kids and now we're, you know, in our thirties that just can't seem to watch the product more on a regular basis. And they would definitely say, Oh, well, I'll get together and we'll watch Royal Rumble. We'll get together and we'll watch Survivor Series. They know the big four. And then they maybe do the same with Money in the Bank. And if, of course, there's a big match going up, like they overhear that, you know, uh, on Extreme Rules, it's going to be John Cena versus Brock Lesnar. And it's like for the first time, this kind of thing or something. Then, yeah, they're going to be interested in that. But that's a rarity. You know, that's not even one out of every 12 events. That's one out of every 30 something events. Every couple of years, another match like that comes down. Same as with like, you know, I don't check out UFC, but when CM Punk was fighting for the first time, yeah, of course I was going to be going over to a friend's house and we're going to be watching that. But WrestleMania Backlash isn't going to get those people to tune in. So I, I understand the strategy. I just don't think that the strategy functionally is going to work as well as they think that it's going to. And eh, I guess if you're going to call it Backlash or WrestleMania Backlash, you might as well call it WrestleMania Backlash and get a couple more people. If it ends up being, you know, 200 more people buy something, still more, you know. So I guess I understand that, but eh, it is still kind of lame. And maybe the Sunday Stunner is the one in June, or maybe it's another thing entirely. It doesn't have to be a pay-per-view. Maybe Sunday Stunner is like a uh, an upcoming like fan event thing that they plan on doing. But the fact that they're using the Stunner name... Of course, some people are thinking that this has something to do with Stone Cold. And if Steve Austin has anything to do with it, I don't expect it to be a pay-per-view, obviously, unless he's like the host or something. But then again, he's probably going to be the host for WrestleMania, too. So uh, I don't know. I mean, they could do Sunday Stunner as some sort of special event with Austin. They could make it some kind of a TV show, but then they'd be limiting that to Sundays as well. I'm certainly leaning more towards it being a pay-per-view. I guess we'll figure out when the time comes, right? So, uh, speaking of events and upcoming things like that, let's talk about some predictions of Vengeance Day that's coming up. And we normally, you know, don't really do like a dedicated pay-per-view point kind of thing for these special events that are just television episodes, but I figured I'd toss them into the hot tags because, you know, why not? And coming up on this Tuesday night, we got a couple matches that have been confirmed I don't think that they're going to be surprising us with anything in particular, but, you know, maybe, maybe they do. Uh, if they do, that's kind of the whole nature of the surprises. We don't know that they're going to be doing that. But uh, currently, the card lineup is as follows. We've got the Women's Tag Team Championship on the line. Toxic Attractions, D uh, Gigi Dolan and JC Jane are going to be defending against Indy Hartwell and Persia Perota. I'm assuming in that match, we've got basically Hartwell and Perota put up a good fight, but Toxic Attraction ends up retaining through some sort of shenanigans. Maybe Mandy Rose gets involved. Maybe she doesn't necessarily, and they just cheat. But there's been a lot of setup with this Duke Hudson thing and setting up the uh, you know split between Persia and Indy because of 
a potential past relationship with uh, Duke Hudson. And of course, Dexter Loomis can get involved in that too. And maybe Dexter Loomis fights with Duke Hudson and that's just enough of a distraction for toxic attraction to be able to capitalize and win. I could see that happening a little bit more so than the Mandy Rose thing. Cause what's Mandy have to really say, you know, the supplemental people in a faction, they help out the main champion. The main champion doesn't tend to help out the tag teams, but I'm going with toxic attraction retaining for that match. We've got a weaponized steel cage match. This is Pete Dunn against T- uh, Tony D'Angelo and they were calling this a weaponized steel cage because this is basically the asylum match that we've had before. It was originally the Ambrose asylum. And then of course it's not just Ambrose. So it just becomes the asylum match. I had actually put up a thing right before they did this talking about how Saudi Arabia is running out of gimmicks. And then I had said in there, well, they've got the asylum match, but you kind of shouldn't use the asylum name anymore. Cause it's got the tie to Ambrose and, I'm sure some people out there are offended and whatever, but it's also, you know, they could use a better name for it. And it seems like all they're doing is just saying weaponized steel cage. That's lame in the long run. I like the gimmicky names. I don't really know exactly what I would call that, but I wouldn't just say weaponized steel cage. Cause that to me, well, you know, you could use weapons in a steel cage match as it is. It's no DQ. And I get the whole point is, yeah, but they're not tied to the thing. But I don't know. I, I think that we could use a better name for it. So I want to know also in the comments below, what ideas do you have in mind? What should they rename this instead of going with the weaponized steel cage thing, instead of going with the asylum name? Do you have any kind of gimmicky names? I'm going to brainstorm on it a little bit. And if I think of any, I'll drop them in the comments below. But I want to know what you guys uh, have to say. Tony D'Angelo using the crowbar has been the big bo- uh, basis of this whole feud. Pete Dunne has decided essentially we're going to settle this for good and let's bring a whole bunch of other weapons in there. I, of course, am assuming that we're going to get lots of kendo stick stuff because it's all WWE tends to do these days, but it'll be fun. And, and um, you know, we did something different from the rest of the matches. So I'm excited to see that. And I think in the long run, Pete Dunn makes the most sense to win. But I honestly wouldn't be surprised if Tony D'Angelo won this just to give the newer guy a little bit of a boost, you know? So I'm about 50, 50 on the prediction. Currently I'm leaning a little bit more towards Pete Dunn, but I wouldn't be shocked if it goes the other way. There has been a tease that, uh, Grayson Waller is going to get LA Knight quote unquote arrested for breaking the, uh, restraining order that he had had because he beat Sangha last week. And that was supposed to, kind of influence that situation, but it's still there. So that that'll just eat up some time. I don't think it's going to be all that fantastic. Speaking of that, uh, I do think this one match will be really good. The finale for the men's dusty roads, tag team classic. Funny enough, the women's hasn't even started yet because they just don't have enough women for it. But Hey, that's what happens when you fire 80 something people in the year, right? Uh, Creed brothers right now are going to head into this against last year's winners, MSK. And the story of course, essentially being the winners get a tag team title shot. And MSK has been driving more of the story here because they are looking to regain the ability to challenge Imperium and potentially regain their championships. But I don't think it's happening. I am expecting the Creed brothers to win this and the Creed brothers against Imperium might sound kind of strange to go heel versus heel, but they've been doing a lot more heel versus heel scenarios lately. And they've been transitioning people into temporary baby face spots and kind of tweenerish roles here and there. So I am expecting the Creed brothers to essentially turn baby face in some ways and to not only face Imperium down the line, but I think that they're actually going to beat them. And it wouldn't shock me at all if that happens at stand and deliver. Because if you think about it, Vengeance Day, February 15th, yeah, you got some time to kill before you get to WrestleMania, but a month later, it's only March 15th, and then two more weeks after that, you're at WrestleMania, essentially. So if you can get by six, seven weeks, then you can do this at Stand and Deliver, and I think that setting up the idea of Creed Brothers versus Imperium there 
and then having a title change is a much better option than to just do it on TV. But then again, they are trying to prioritize TV things. And if you want to just do something for the sake of it and try to bump up a rating a little bit, it's kind of strange. You can't say bump up a rating because are they really actually having these ratings bumps or are they just maintaining where they're at? It's another story for another day, I guess. Another discussion, I should say. But, you know, if you want to maintain at least those ratings and you put the tag team titles on TV, that makes sense. I'd rather see things happen to pay-per-views just to kind of keep the pay-per-views going well. But then again, how much time do you have on uh, Stand and Deliver? You might not be able to get five full matches in there if you're doing that right before WrestleMania too. So, oh, I don't know. Um, in the grand scheme of things, though, I do think that the Creed brothers are winning this, and I do think that they are winning those tag titles. And I think that that should be what boosts Imperium up to the main roster after WrestleMania too. Dropping those tag titles means they've got nothing that needs to keep them in NXT anymore. And Gunther, he should not just be hanging around in NXT for the rest of his career. A couple more matches that we do have, though. Uh, two more matches that I'm aware of. The NXT North American Championship is on the line where Cameron Grimes is going to unsuccessfully face Carmelo Hayes. There is no way Cameron Grimes is winning this. I am sorry. I'm a big fan of Cameron Grimes. And, uh, you know, in under normal circumstances, I would be super rooting for him to win. But he's not. Carmelo Hayes just did the whole title unification they're putting way too much stock in him right now. And Cameron Grimes, yeah, you know, I mean, he could be holding the championship and he could have a fun run. But being a more comedic character means that there's less of a chance that he's going to do that anyway. Especially when you say to be able to do that, he has to derail the momentum of Carmelo Hayes. So uh, 100%, I'm going with Carmelo Hayes here. And then finally, the other championship match is also going to stay the same. I am assuming that Braun Breaker retains over Santos Escobar for the NXT championship. It should be a good match. I think that this makes sense for you to pair up Escobar with Breaker because Escobar is a veteran and he is somebody who can teach him while also looking like he's not just there to teach him, you know, because Escobar is a fresh name still in WWE and he held his championship and he did a great job and, you know, I think that Escobar is a talent that is being underutilized even. And to see what he does against Braun Breaker, that should be fun. Breaker definitely needs to be going into stand and deliver as a champion. And I wouldn't have expected Escobar to beat him anyway, even if this was a couple months down the line. But, you know, just because it's going to be somebody beating somebody, then you know how it's going to play out. doesn't mean that it's not still going to be a good match. And I am excited to see that. So, I'm assuming that that is what's happening at Vengeance Day. And that kind of takes care of some predictions. Next week, of course, we're going to get into the Elimination Chamber predictions. So stay tuned for that. Um, let's talk about some Keith Lee. He has appeared for AEW. And not only did he make that appearance, he signed with AEW, as did AQA, who had faced Jade Cargill earlier in the week on Dynamite. And... With the, with the AQA thing, sure, why not? I mean, try her out, see how she can uh, progress over the course of her career. And, yeah, you, know, you got to be able to get more talent here and there. And it can't just be all 100% former uh, WWE talent. But she's young enough that WWE could have molded her in a certain way. Maybe AEW is going to mold her in a different way. Maybe that's better for her. That's not as big of a story as Keith Lee, though. Not just because Biggie, uh, Biggie, uh, Keith Lee is a bigger star, but he's also just, you know, a bigger name. And there is a whole lot of positives that come with this. Um, I guess the best way for me to just say it is as much as a fan of Keith Lee as I am, and how much I wanted to see him succeed so well in WWE, the fact that it didn't happen was so frustrating and so annoying that it was just like, you've got this easy win here. Like Keith Lee is so good. Push him, make him the guy who can beat Brock Lesnar, make him, you know, a Royal rumble winner, give him the WWE championship, do something. You know, the fact that it didn't happen was so disappointing that to see him in AEW is of course like, Oh, okay, good. He's, he's landed somewhere. He's landed in the best possible spot for him. So that's already great. But I think this is going to be overall better for him too. I do think, honestly, if he would have came into WWE a few years earlier, I think that that environment would have been better for him. 
And I think that like if he could have done the run, say let's put him in like a fantasy scenario. If you put Keith Lee younger in the spot that like Velveteen Dream was in, obviously not playing the same character and stuff, but just like that spot on the roster as another guy to build towards. I think he not only would have been on the main roster years ago, of course, but he also would have been one of the success stories and he would have been one of those guys that's still sticking around kind of like a Kevin Owens sort of, but with AEW, he has a lot of fresh options of people he can feud with. He has a lot of people who are more of his style and he's got a guy in Tony Khan who just likes wrestling. So that's Keith Lee's strong point. He's not as much of the pure character type. He's a guy who can go out there, look big and look impressive as all hell from being able to do these fantastic maneuvers despite his size. So I think he's going to do great for AEW. I don't think that he's going to be winning the championship in the next couple of months or so, but maybe down the line he is, or maybe he's just one of those guys that happens to be, you know, TNT champion or something. I do say give him the belt. And I think that they should do some great stuff with him because he's great. So great uh, news seeing him pop up in AEW. And I don't think that this is anywhere far from the last time that we're going to see somebody get signed to AEW. That's a former WWE person over the next couple of months. I do fully expect Jeff Hardy in there. I think that's where Scott is going to go over there. Of course, it's Shane Strickland or some other kind of name instead of Isaiah Swerve Scott, because that's a WWE entity. I do think that we're going to see potentially down the line Wyndham Rotunda, but I don't think that's happening anytime soon. I think that that's more of like a next year kind of deal or something talking completely out of my ass. Of course, I don't know anything. I'm not backstage. So take that for, you know, a, a big, big grain of salt, but uh, congrats to AQA and to Keith Lee for getting signed to arguably the best wrestling organization going on right now, depending on your preferences. We're going to talk about some other things with uh, SmackDown and some spoilers But before we get into the spoilers, because I know some people, of course, don't want to know spoilers and everything, I'm going to give you a chance to uh, to know that we are happening with that and, um, you know, make sure that you skip that part of the video or so. But actually, before we even get into that, we are going to just take a break for a second for me to talk to you about our sponsors for this episode that have been sponsoring us for quite a while now, Manscaped. We mentioned before Valentine's Day is coming up, so you are running out of time at this point. I mean, this is uh, the twelfth that this is coming up here, but you got you know two more days. You try to rush something. You should have been ordering something ahead of time, but you know just in case if you miss out on that or you got a little bit of a tentative late date or something, and you want to make sure that you are all set for Valentine's Day, then the best things for you to do are to prepare yourself with all the products from Manscaped. You got the grooming kit that you see on the screen right now, the Shears 2.0, which take care of your nails and everything. I'm going to cut my nails a little bit after I uh, record this, but there's a whole lot of products. Again, you can see them on your screen right now. If you're watching this on YouTube at the very least, the crop mock stuff, the crop gel, crop exfoliator, all these different scents are, they're on like the manly side of smells. You know, you're not going to get the, the fruity types of things and it's not going to smell like you're plastering yourself with some sort of perfume or something. It's got that kind of musky scent to it that, you want to smell like if you're in this kind of environment and all that. And if you use the promo code SMARK, S-M-A-R-K, you get 20% off and you get free shipping on your order. So that's a, it's a win-win situation. So whether it's picking up something like the Weed Whacker or the Lawn Mower, especially the 4.0 one, which the has the uh, advanced skin safe technology. So, you know, you're never going to cut yourself. I still, to this day, have never once cut myself with any of these products. So that is running a record that no other shaver that I have can say. But, uh, you know, 20% off and free shipping is something that you should take advantage of. Just use that promo code SMARK and pick up all these different products and you're going to enjoy all of them. So, uh, I don't know, type in some success stories, uh, success stories. I should have drank my water before I said that, uh, in the comments below and tell us how well this, uh, this did you on Valentine's day when this comes around. So, uh, let's get into those spoilers. So right now, after, you know, waiting a little bit of time to try to see if maybe there was anything more, it seems like the spoilers for next week are pretty bare bones. Uh, I have only came across four things that have happened on this taping. And 
there's not a whole lot uh, that seems to be filling up the, you know, like the match side of things. They do have two matches that took place and there are two, like there's a contract signing and there's the face to face between Roman Reigns and Bill Goldberg. Uh, one of the matches is Ricochet beats Sheamus. Nothing really going on there, but the other one, and again, spoiler alert, if you don't want to know it, skip forward for a minute or so giving you the warning. Sami Zayn is the new Intercontinental Champion. He defeated Shinsuke Nakamura, as was to be expected. And we've got a new title change. We've got a champion that they seem to be much more interested in telling some stories behind. Because, let's face it, look, Shinsuke Nakamura is great. And I don't think that you can deny that. But when WWE gives him a championship, and they've done this like three times now, they give him the title, and then they do fuck all with it whether he's United States or Intercontinental Champion, he just holds the belt. And they barely ever give him any feuds. When they do give him a feud, it's very bare bones, and it tends not to last all that long, or it tends to last forever with nothing to it. I think that they give him the championship to make him seem better rather than they give the championship to him so he can help the championship. And it's sort of a compensation deal. It's like, okay, well, you're holding the title, so that means you matter it doesn't matter if we do anything with you. You're holding the championship, so you are a person that matters. Sami Zayn, though, he's going out there. He's cutting promos with uh, Johnny Knoxville, and he's having fun with the insane stuff. They enjoy Sami Zayn, and they like putting him on television. So why not give him the Intercontinental Championship? It makes so much more sense. If you're going to do that, give the belt to somebody who is going to actually do something with it. And Sami Zayn is a great option to do that. So I'm excited to see another reign for Sami Zayn. It's a shame that Shinsuke Nakamura doesn't get a better one, but at least he got another one, right? So I think that's a smart move. I have no idea who beats Sami Zayn, who even challenges him for the title at WrestleMania. Maybe Big E, but then we're just doing another rematch again, and I'm sick and tired of these fucking rematches. I want somebody new. I want somebody different. I want to... Have like Sami Zayn defend the title against like uh I mean I don't want to see him defend the title against Johnny Knoxville. That's not something that's really going to pan out well. But there are people on mostly the Raw side of things and the NXT side of things that I would much rather see Sami Zayn up against than to just do a Big E match against. And that's not a shot at Big E. Big E's great. Love Big E. He of course did not get anywhere near as much of a championship reign as he should have. They did him dirty with that. But we saw Big E feuding with Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. We've seen Big E fighting for the Intercontinental Championship at WrestleMania against Apollo Crews. Same old, just because it happened a year ago instead of two years ago, or two years ago instead of a year ago, doesn't mean that I still want to see it again, you know? So I would have much rather had seen, even, you know, just to switch it up a little bit at the very least, Finn Balor versus Sami Zayn. Or I would have liked to have seen maybe somebody come up from NXT. Like, give me Pete Dunne versus Sami Zayn. Give me Tommaso Ciampa. Bring up Cameron Grimes and have him fight Sami Zayn. Do like a more silly kind of thing. Do LA Knight versus Sami Zayn. I want them to just do something different. And at the very least, if the belt's on Sami Zayn, I think that's better than on Nakamura. As far as other TV stuff for this week to review, I don't think that there's really anything of note. You know, um, Monday Night Raw was an episode of Monday Night Raw. Same old stuff for the most part. We had another awful thing with Alexa Bliss and crying over the Lily doll. And, you know, I Bro had their uh, quiz bowl. And I know that a lot of people weren't super fond of that. To me, I was just kind of like, all right, I don't have to pay too much attention to this. <laughs> it's something for me to, you know, focus more on making my dinner, essentially. But yeah, not much more that we need to break down here. And of course, when it comes to next week, we will talk about the TV stuff and we will talk about everything else that's leading into the Elimination Chamber pay per view. Live coverage for that over on smartcatmoment.com and the live post show following that. And then any changes that are happening to the card, like the fact that we got another match added to the pay-per-view for the spoilers it's a tag team match we'll talk about the ronda rousey situation next time and you know we got the addition of the false count anywhere match instead of it just being mad cat moss against drew mcintyre 
any stuff like that throughout the week, you will see that updated on smartmoment.com as well. But that's going to do me in for the hot tags for this episode. And, uh, you know, if anything else changes, you'll know about that down the line as well. Follow Smart Out Moment all over the place at Smart Out Moment. Check out the website for everything else that's happening there because it's not just a podcast. We also have the other articles and everything that like Dallas and Callum and everybody writes. And then random updates and random editorials and everything. Uh, I, of course, have fanboysanonymous.com that I do things with as well. And, you know, coming up pretty soon, we're going to end up having like the Batman is coming out. So, of course, you're going to see some stuff about that. I might do another one of those uh, predicting the plot where I try to assume what the movie is all about and try to preview the whole movie without knowing anything. And uh, I might do some other stuff here and there. You never know what's going to pop up. But if you head on over to fanboysanonymous.com, you follow everything there, you check out that YouTube channel and you do all that good stuff, subscribe and hit up that Patreon and whatnot, then that's helpful as well. And then check out the other articles that I write for EWN and BR over on those kind of platforms. You can follow me at Tony Mango to see what else I'm tweeting or, you know, whatever else I got cooking up here. And uh, I don't know. I guess that's about it. So thank you for listening to this episode, everybody. Thank you for all your support and whatever it is. And I will see you next time. But for now, this has been another Smart Out moment. And I'm being counted out.